Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 2. And today I'm going to be giving you part 4 of what if Naruto had a new dream that changed everything. Remember to get this one to 300 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also remember if you're new to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. Thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new guys because I'll be replying and talking about all of you. And stay in tune for the rest of what is coming your way. I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro. So, the last spot we left off, Naruto was frustrated with himself as he went off on Inyari as he added chakra to his voice to meet the boy stay where he is as he didn't like how he was talking to his mother. After all, the woman did so much for him as Naruto decided to take a walk. Naruto also knew that he was catching feelings, yes, he was getting feelings for Tsunami and he didn't like that one bit because of Zana as he thought about her. As Naruto started to think about things that he realized something. Zana was doing this on purpose, yes. She wanted to sleep with as much women as possible. He never really understood why. Was she hoping that he catch feelings for someone else? As Naruto let out his frustration in the forest, the next morning Haku came as she saw him. She bent down to attack him but Naruto grabbed her and pinned her down on the ground. Haku realized that she lost. She was unable to get back Zabuzasama's sword and she was unable to best him. She told him to kill her. But Naruto spoke to her instead, as she told him why she was so loyal to Zabuza. As Naruto listed her story, Naruto had the idea that Gato was trying to trick them, so he wanted to speak to Zabuza himself. Well, Haku would be able to pass on the message. So they planned. As the days passed, as Naruto stayed behind, as he took care of the two bandits that came to kidnap Tsunami and Inere. As the boy told Naruto that he will fight and make sure his mother is safe, as Naruto nodded as he went off. As Naruto arrived at the bridge, as no fight was going on except for Haku, facing off against Sasuke, as Sasuke wanted to fight her, as he ended up activating Sharingan but he was knocked down by Haku as Gato came with his man. As the massacre started, they stood absolutely no chance as Abusa, Naruto and the others tried to wipe them out. As Naruto told Gato if he didn't want to die, do something for him. Naruto made Gato sign over the company towards Tesume before Zabuza then killed him. As Zabuza never promised that he wouldn't. So with that, Zabuza got a larger more sum than what he would get as all of them left happy. As Naruto knew that he had to say goodbye, he said goodbye to Tsunami. She knew this time would come so she wasn't that sad. But at least, she had a wonderful time as she said goodbye to him with a deep passionate kiss before he left, surprising everyone. As Naruto returned back home, as Zaina was there, as she admitted that she was trying to make him fall in love to see if he would stop his task of trying to be with her, that impossible task and pick your easier way. But to her surprise he picked the harder way same way as he was still indebted with his dreams. As the both of them end up sleeping together the next morning because he was exhausted, as people heard his screams come from his apartment, as Sir Toby also spoke to Naruto about it and Naruto phrased it in a way to make it sound like he actually did something bad. But Sakura and Sasuke then spoke about it, about what Naruto has been doing. Sir Toby couldn't believe that Naruto has been sleeping with the clients. As he didn't even know that. Once that was over, Naruto wanted some more training as he asked Kakashi about someone in the village that knew Genjutsu and someone that knew Taijutsu. As Kakashi told him about Guy and also Kurenai, Kakashi giggled as he wondered if Naruto would sleep with Kurenai as well. Asma wouldn't be happy about that. So, yeah, guys, that's basically that's what I've thought. You guys can switch across the page and check it out for yourself. So, what do you say begin this new episode? It has been several days since Naruto asked Kakashi as Team 8 just arrived for a mission. Two days ago, as he was approaching their training ground. Since Naruto came back to the village, he has been working on several projects, such as his water and wind training. His water affinity was going better than his wind, which was fine with him because he was more interested in water anyway. 
Win was one dimensional, it was heavy, on offense, and it only had very little uses. But water was more useful, and he found it very easy to control the water nature for some reason. But his greatest interest was Fujutsu, the most powerful of the shinobi's arts, if he was a master at it. A skillful Fujutsu user could do practically anything if he knew how. Naruto hit a roadblock as he wasn't able to find enough information on Ying and Yang Chakra. He knew that Chakra was a mixture of physical and spiritual energy, but Ying and Yang release were highly specialized and refined version of this concept. He was gambling on the idea that a Gento specialist would have some information on Yang release, at least. He already met with the eccentric Jonin Sensei Mai Gai and arranged more frequent sparring matches with the eccentric Lee as well. It had been rather easy to get them to agree to it, as they were always happy to help a fellow shinobi and once they heard about his troubles with Ninjutsu, they kept on shouting about how youthful he was to overcome his weakness and told him to join them in their daily exercise. They were weird and creepy as hell, but Naruto could definitely respect their determination. They were confused and he told me he had the alternative training weights, but they didn't make a fuss over it. The only real downside to them was Neji Hayuka. The guy was an asshole, talking about fate this, fate that. As Naruto made a mental note to beat the crap out of the guy one day, he had vaguely known Lee and Tenten from the previous years in the academy, but he never recalled Neji being so stuck up and irritated. Kurina was definitely a beautiful eccentric woman with her red eyes and her black hair. Kurina noticed him as she was surprised. She knew that he was a part of Kakashi's team so she was confused why he was here. Her Jennings also noticed him and they had various reactions. Hinata was blushing because he was topless, just covered by the black cloak that he kept open at all times. She wished she could be as bold as him but she was too embarrassed to take off her oversized coat because of her developing breasts. Shino had no outward reaction but his insects were reacting at Naruto's powerful chakra. Shino had never been quite sure what to make of his former classmate. The chakra's bug sense were actually gigantic, but he was supposed to be dead last, that was rather confusing. He but didn't really know what to think of Naruto, on one hand. The blonde was dead last, but Akumar was telling him that he was dangerous. He didn't think that Naruto was all that dangerous, but he did remember, the blonde never lost a spar in the academy. You, I san said Naruto. You have been pointed out to me as a Genju specialist. There is something I wish to discuss with you, said Naruto, in a proper tone. Forgive me if I'm wrong, uzumaki san but you don't seem like a Genju user, said Kurenai. She knew that he had too much chakra and far too little control for Genjutsu. I am not, said Naruto, but I still need help of someone with a grasp over the art. How about we discuss this over lunch, he said. Kurna raised her eyebrow and lunch invitation, ignoring the look of surprise on her Jenny's face. She heard some rumors about the student of Kakashi. She found it hard to believe that he slept with almost half of the women in the village. But that lunch invitation sounded rather suspicious. She had no denying that he was attractive. But she was not going to be any my latest conquest. I'm afraid I cannot accept your invitation, Uzumaki san. My team and I already have planned to go for lunch. They are welcome to join us if they wish. What I wish to discuss with you is nothing secret. I will pay for all of them, he said. Kurina was a bit confused. Well, if he was inviting all of them for lunch, well, he was not trying to get in her pants then. Could he actually want to discuss Kenjutsu? She looked towards her students, seeing if they want to accept yes or not. Free lunch? Always good, said Kiba. I have no objections, said Shino. As Hinata just nodded as she was still embarrassed. Time skip, Naruto led them towards Ichiroku Ramen, which had over the years expended. And it didn't just serve ramen anymore, as Toka had took all their orders. So they were now waiting. So, Uzumaki san, you said you want to discuss something about Kenjutsu, Kurna began. Just Naruto, please. And yes, I have several things I want to discuss with you. Alright then, Naruto. What was it you couldn't ask Kakashi? Since I know he's proficient in Genjutsu. Kakashi know how to use Genjutsu, yes. But I need someone a better grasp of it. I am studying Fujutsu and I am making an educating guess that someone to grasp a proper Genjutsu could help me with it. Aside from that, I would also like to learn how to get out of Genjutsu from you. Kurna was surprised to hear that Fujutsu users were extremely rare. She only knew a few people with Fujutsu and they struggled hard to learn them. What are you working on that you will need a Genjutsu specialist to help you? I have recently been researching Ying and Yang Chakra but I think a roadblock said Ruto. I am working on the assumption that Genjutsu is a spiritual axis of chakra. Am I right about that? He asked. Yes, Genjutsu is very little of the physical component of chakra. I must say I'm rather surprised that you know about Yang and Yang chakra. Only a few Joni knew about that. Fujutsu make you learn all sorts of strange things. Well anyway, I've been attempting to create a seal that will allow me to store some Yang chakra. Since the Yang aspect is formed, 
without any substance. I'm assuming that Genjutsu powered by Yang Chakra alone will be at their most powerful. Eventually I hope Kirita met her to harness Ying and Yang Chakra instead of using the watered down version of what most nobis do today. Kirina was incredibly impressed and she couldn't believe it. These were the things that made Shinobi legendary but it sounds very difficult to do what he was suggesting. You're attempting to use Yang Chakra to power Genjutsu just like what the second Mizukagi was able to rumor to do. I didn't know that bit about the Mizukagi, but no, I'm afraid I'm not much of a Genjutsu user. I am interested in the scene, the effect of Yang Chakra Genjutsu. I'm theorizing that the physical component that you're using Genjutsu at the moment is making it easier to dispel. You've definitely caught my interest, but if you're not attempting to use Yang Release to Genjutsu, then what are you doing this for? She asks. I'm interested to see what I can do with the refined Yang and Yang Chakra. I'm very sure that the Yang Chakra won't allow anything other than body enhancements, but I want to crack the seal and use them some orthodox ways, perhaps even combine the two. That sounds interesting, she said, but I'm afraid I don't know how to use pure Yin Chakra. I've been trying to figure it out for a long while now, but I have no success so far, so I don't know how much help I'll be. I didn't expect you to know how to use the Senruto, but to your Genjutsu expertise, I hope you can help me make a breakthrough in my own Jutsu research. Then who knows, we might figure out a way to harness Yang Chakra while we're at it. Aside from that, I still need you to teach me how to break through Genjutsu. So what do you say, Kurinai Sensei, he said, referring to her as Sensei with a smirk. As he knew that she was interested in this, and would probably be unable to resist. She thought though for another long moment, but she knew that she was going to accept. She had been trying to use Yang Chakra Genjutsu for a year now, and now he come a fresh genin with an idea on how to use it. And he had the skill with Fuin Jutsu, so they could figure out the problem. Alright, Naruto, I accept. Hinata, Kiba, and Shino have been silently watching the exchange between the both of them. As their supposedly dead last classmate was now in a debate about some high level chakra theory that they never even heard of before. It was about this time Ayam came up from the back with the food that they ordered. Kiba turned his head as he looked at the beautiful waitress. Hey, baby, he said, where have you been all my life? Ayam raised the eyebrow the much younger boy, trying to be smooth with her. He was not the only one to try a lame pick-up line, and definitely not the best. Kurna eyebrow and twitch, as Kiba has been showing the signs of becoming a pervert, all her attempts of stopping him from becoming the next area has failed so far. Stop sniffing around my sister Kiba, said Naruto. Your sister? Many voices said rather confused. Not by blood, but he's thought of me as a sister for years now, a big sister, Ayam said. Aside from Zana, I almost probably the only one that knew everything about him. She even knew about Zana and what he was trying to achieve, that she hadn't tried to convince him out of it, or change his judgement, had made her all the more precious to him. Well, even if she is your sister, it's up to her to decide if she won't have an animalistic experience. Kiba said a cocky smirk. Well, I'll be sure to tell her that when I go after your sister, and maybe your mother too, said Ruto. As Kronai choked on her food, Hinata became right even she knows blushing a bit, but you couldn't see it by the shirt that was up. Maybe, even both at the same time, said Naruto. This last one made Hinata go nuclear, and even Kurna was blushing a bit. As Naruto looked over at Hinata, if you blush any harder, people might mistake you for lantern at the red light district, said Naruto. This was too much as she passed out, as she no caught her. As Kiba burst out, you stay away from my mother and sister, bastard, and what do you mean when you go after them? Well, since you're just a supporter, of allowing women to choose who they want to sleep with. I suppose I should make them know that I'm available. Kiba just looked at Naruto as he clenched his fists. Fine, I get the point. I'll stay away from yours if you stay away from mine. Agreed, said Naruto. But if they come after me, all bets are off. That will never happen, Kiba shouted. Keep telling yourself that it might actually be true. But then again, it might not be. Time skip. Two months later, Kurunai had decided to teach Naruto how to dispel Genjutsu first. He wasn't able to send his chakra flow, or he didn't want to stab himself. As he found a different way to break Genjutsu, he discovered when he was trying to stop his chakra flow, but he ended up condensing it instead. Turns out if your chakra was dense enough, the foreign chakra of the Genjutsu could not pass through your coils and do its job. Kurunai couldn't believe it. It made him immune to regular Genjutsu as long as his chakra was dense. They didn't figure the Yang release yet, and Naruto theorized that his full Genjutsu knowledge wasn't good enough. He match convinced Kurunai to bring him all the Funjutsu books from the Chunin and Jonin selection of the library, as she did it, even though she should not. 
She loaned him them under the condition that he was only supposed to loot them over and he see if anything was inside them that could help them in the research. Naruto agreed but as soon as he got home, he created a small army of clones to copy everything as soon as possible. He now had a small army of clones going over the knowledge that has became a field by them. The things that he see in those books were too far interesting to let go. It irritated Naruto to go on missions now because he was taking time away from his study and his Fujutsu test. Merely days ago he cracked the secret how to manipulate gravity with Fujutsu. He needed to inscribe an area with a seal in array and he could adjust the gravity in that area. The potential for training the higher gravity area had left him excited but he did not train with it yet because of missions. As Naruto also figured the problem with his ninjutsu as he created a seal in array that helped him mold the chakra with whatever ninjutsu that he wished. It was like it was making a hand sign for him as long as he knew them well. He didn't need to worry about control because all he needed to do was channel chakra into it and the seal would do its job. This was certainly interesting but he long lost regular interest in normal ninjutsu. Yes, he's going past that as he hadn't stopped working on the elemental nature either and he was more intrigued about water nature now. With his dense chakra, his control over water was different from anything else. He still didn't have any techniques but he was working on some things that would be promising if he got them to work. But all of this work and the memories from his clones, he's been having a headache recently. He was sure that he, if it wasn't for his healing factor his brain would start to leak out of his ears. This has been confirmed when he knocked himself once out in a D-rank mission and his team was forced to bring him to the hospital. When he woke up he heard terms of neural bruising and brain damage being tossed around. So he decided to tone it down just a bit. Another thing had changed was his D-ranks. As the third, I talked to the clients, potential clients, to not use Naruto as an escort service. So things have been toned down. But the damage for Team 7 has already been done. And Naruto and Kakashi didn't really care about it. But Sakura and Sasuke weren't fine with it. She could even walk down the street without the villagers looking disapprovingly in her way. But Sasuke fan girls were getting crazy and hunting him even more. Currently, however, Naruto was not suffering any headaches or driving his teammates insane. At this moment he was sparring with Kurunai, the two of them has been working on their project for some time now. Kurunai was curious how good he really was after he suggested a spar. And her curiosity has been stemmed from the fact that both of their teams had been nominated for tuning exams as she wanted to see how he tested up against her jennies. She became regretful to agree to the spar because she was seeing several things that made it rather difficult for her. She wasn't able to use Genjutsu against him because the chakra was dense as he was condensed in it. And Taijutsu and Ninjutsu wasn't her strong point. Naruto was stronger, faster and his body was so dense. Her strong blows wouldn't even have any effects. She on the other hand had to make sure she didn't get hit by him not even once because she got close when she substituted and she saw the log that he hit exploded into splinters. The only thing even keeping her in the fight was her experience, a few fire juice that she knew and Naruto was only limited to Taijutsu and clones but she knew if he got a drop at her it was going to be all over as she was already panting from using so many ninjutsus. As for him he was literally smiling and had a big smile on his face. He was excited about this as he was a bit singed from a fireball not too long ago. But the burn was being healed. He had discarded his coat and was facing her bare chested and that was somewhat distracting. Naruto could have ended the fight a long time ago if he used his chains. But he was keeping it a secret. Well until Sakura went and blabbed about it. Decided to finish it he made several clothes as he rushed to water. As she dispelled them, after all, the only cause one hit. As Origin rushed towards her, she moved forward and hit him, but he dispelled. As he was just a clone, as Origin grabbed her from behind and pinned her to the ground, the same way that he did Haku. As he pinned her hands above her head, she was quite angry at herself for falling for that trick. As he had been coming at her with blindsided attacks from a straightforward get go, but now he did this tricky move. Currently, he was grinning at her. As he was pleased with the fact that he won against a Jonin, even if her. Main Afinte was out of the play, Genjutsu. I want Kurunai Sensei, he said. So you do, she said, as her pride was feeling a bit down that she lost to a Jenin. But even if she lost, their current position was rather, well, enjoyable. She didn't know when, but she had developed some kind of attraction to the blonde. Despite the rumors about him, seeing the past two months, he was not exactly what she thought he'd be. She had even made her interest clear. But Kurnai wanted to be in a relationship and they spoke as he told her and she heard that some of the rumors were true about him sleeping with numerous girls in the village. That was rather surprising because he wasn't acting like a pervert with her. Well, 
few comments about her beauty, but nothing perverted. So she thought the rumors were completely made up. She thought that people were just hating him because he was a Kaibiji Julke. She had backed off. She didn't just want sex alone. But her attraction to him has not gone down. She couldn't blame him for not wanting to get into a serious relationship at his age, but he was still frustrating her to no end. He was the most interesting and impressive man out of a rather limited suggestion. Even if he was just 10 years younger, she couldn't even get angry. He just wanted casual sex. He openly told her everything instead of being a perv. Maybe we better get up. I think we're giving your training a show, said Naruto with a smirk. What? As she turned her head, indeed, her three students were there. Looking at them, their face red. The three of them arrived and saw the spar, and they were shocked to see that Naruto was winning. They saw that their teacher wasn't using it against Jutsu, but it was still impressive to see a Jenny win against a Jolin. But he tackled her to the ground, and he was so close his body pressed up against hers, and they were talking like normal. They quickly got to their feet, Kurnai blushing heavily at being seen like that, but Naruto simply smirked. Well, Kurnai Sensei, we will continue research after the exams. I hope to see your team participating. After saying that he left, leaving her alone to explain her position to her students. Time skip. As Naruto was sitting on top of his father's head, as he was looking over the village, the past two months has been rather good to him, as he learned a lot. He was surprised, however, with Kurnai, having that romantic interest in him. Yes, that took him for a loop. Beautiful she was. He had no intention of getting involved in any relationship with anyone, beside from Zana. He wasn't sure how to classify his relationship with a demoness, but she has been around recently a lot, and that made him happy. She was difficult to read, as Naruto didn't think wrong that he was getting through to her, as he was certain to himself that power was not the only thing she cared about. His thoughts were interrupted as he sensed her. Have you come to enjoy the view with me? I came to warn you, but actually, watching the sunset with you does sound pleasant. As she sat down in front of him and leaned back on his chest, warn me. This must be quite important if you felt I need a warning, said Naruto. It is. I have sensed the arrival of my weakest brother, Shikaku, said Zana. The Ichibai. Is he sealed, Naruto asked. Yes, she said. He has been sealed for centuries now. The bloodthirsty lunatic doesn't have the wicks to regain his freedom, she said. You mean he's not like you at all, Naruto asked. As he thought that the tail beast would be more like Zana, but just not as powerful. There is no one like me, she said. As Naruto could detect some bitterness in her tone. As Naruto wanted to talk about this, but he didn't want to get her wild up. You know, I've been told I give a good massage, but I like your opinion on my technique. We can talk about this while I work you down, he said. She looked at him with an amused look before she agreed. Time skip. The two of them were now near her apartment. As she was on the bed, the both of them naked. As Naruto was behind her, as he was using his chalk over his hands to give her a place in massage, she purred in enjoyment as she began to speak. For you to understand the difference between me and other bijous, I need to start from the beginning, she said. It was several thousand years ago, there was no bijous, no shinobis, not even chakra. Naruto was quite shocked by that, he thought that chakra had always existed, but he didn't interrupt as he wanted to hear more. The only thing of mystical power is the Shinju, the god tree. The Shinju was the last remnant of divine power in this world. From what I understand, the gods have left this world, leaving behind the Shinju. The only one remains is that god. And he's a faded specter of what he once was. Even though diminished, he is. He is still the most powerful entity to this world. As for the people, they are much the same as they are now. Well, they lack the chakra. This is a good thing in my opinion because they were capable of doing less damage in that way. I guess that means they were constantly warning each other, said Naruto. Exactly so. This went on for a long time. Until a princess by the name of Kaguya saw that the god tree had more fruit. She had good intentions. Thinking that if she ate the fruit from the god tree... It will give her power to stop this war. So what went wrong, said Naruto. While indeed eating the fruit did grant her great power, she was naive to think that humanity was just going to stop war, just because she was more powerful than them. She may eventually brought them all down, but her peace would have been forced, and only last for a few decades. I'm getting the feeling that something else went wrong, said Naruto. She was pregnant when she ate the fruit, and the power that was granted to her was only concentrated further into her unborn son. The child was different from the beginning. He had eyes, purple, with a ripple pattern in them, it came to be known as a Renegon. It was a manifestation of divine power and granted abilities that mortals were never supposed to have. What happened after that, Naruto said, as he moved his hand to her lower back. Kaguya named her son Hagromo, as she hoped to have a normal life with him. However, Hagromo grew faster than she thought. He even gained powers that was beyond her. 
She got her wish about ending war between the separate factions when the Shinju started to move. Move? Wasn't it just a tree, said Naruto? A divine tree, yeah, but still a tree. Everyone was as shocked as you. The Shinju had not moved since everyone had seen it. But it sensed that Hagro had gained divine power and it started to reshape itself. What was once a tree became an immense ten-tailed demon god. Ten-tailed? Naruto said in shock. Yes, it was the very first ten-tailed beast. A divine entity that had turned demonic in its rage. It rampaged across the land, destroying everything in its path, until Hagromo went to challenge it. You must understand that the power of Shinju had no limits. Yet Hagromo, who had taken the call himself the Siege of Six Bad by then, challenged it. He was an apparition that should never exist, a human with divine power, a mortal god. Their battle rate for days, they had limitless power. They were able to draw power from their surroundings as well, to replenish themselves. But the Shinju was a rampaging beast and the Sage was a man capable. And a man capable of making complex plans. That is the reason why he won. In a desperate gamble, he won by using Fujutsu to seal the beast inside of himself. Naruto moved down to her legs by this point. Shouldn't that have killed him? From what I know, I would have died if I was any older when dad tried to seal you within me. Everyone else would have died, but due to the vastness of his own power and because of the Renegon, he had no trouble at all. But the Tentil Demon has spawned many demons that scatter all over, and he was left with that problem. He went to hunt them, but for all of his power, it could only be in one place at a time. The demons prey on the weak human for a time, many of them developing a taste for women. While the sage hunted the demons, many of the assaulted women became pregnant from this and bore childs. But the sage had feared that they would be born as demons, but they were humans and they were capable of using chocolate like him, but much smaller scale. Some of them even display abilities that would be come to known as bloodline. So you're telling me chakra and bloodlines are a result of women getting raped by demons? Naruto said that scowl. As he didn't like hearing about something like that. Not entirely, the sage sired children of his own and was able to awaken chakra and humans with some effort. He traveled through the world preaching about peace of chakra and spreading his teaching through the elemental nation. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that it didn't work out the way he wanted to, said Naruto. Everything was going well, the land had set into peace, and Hagromo was able to spend time with his sons. But he eventually grew old and he knew that the creature that was in him would eventually break free after his death. Which is why he used his power to split it into 9 pieces. Wait, you and the other bitches, Nurka said. Yes, he had little time back then. And he told us of our origins. And told us to provide peace. And counsel to the humans in the world. Of me, he asked that I look after his descendants. And make sure they did not abuse the power that was granted to them. Who were his descendants, Nurka asked. The Senju and the Uchiyas, but they were not known as such at the time. The Uzumaki splinter away from the Senju a long time ago. And the Hayuga splinter away from the Uchiyas a long time ago, she said. As Naruto was shot by that, it was less than two generations after he died that things started to go wrong. Humans started to use chakra as weapons. The Uchiha heiress at that time, who was Hagurumu's granddaughter, was assaulted by one of the many remaining demons. The chakra that she had, it became corrupted, leading to the creation of the Sharingan. So the Sharingan's are demonic bloodlines and Naruto. Yes, and the wielders are more focused on the darker emotions because of that. When I told you that I sensed great amount of malice from the village, it was mostly from the Uchiyas. It feels odd to know that they have almost wiped themselves out. So, said Naruto, what do you mean when you say there was no one like you? Because the sage screwed up. The way he made us. I was the strongest by far. Posing more than half of the strength that Tentil had. Because he put more faith in me. He was still a human after all and he didn't understand what it meant. That the Shinjo had become demonic. The other eight bejews lacked the power to stabilize their mind and because of that they eventually went feral only regained their sense when they are sealing some kind of human vessel but this was only worsened as humans start to use them as weapons making their rage even worse the world descended into war and I abandoned the elemental nations for many centuries I even left behind the name that Sage had given me after all I wasn't doing his task anymore is that why your name sounds so foreign said Naruto yes I chose this name from another land and yes, there are several other continents on this world before you ask. I went there, and I did not watch my siblings go mad, or watch you humans use divine power to kill each other. I spent a long time by myself, as I tried to subdue the anger and the darkness. I was made from a demonic chakra of their all, but it is always there inside of me. If I had met you when I was younger, I would have killed you for the slightest irritation. Well, I'm glad I met you when you were older, said Ruto. Her foot came up and knocked him in the back as he fell right on top of her. Enough of this, she said. There's still one place that you haven't massaged yet. 
Oh, it would be my pleasure, said Ruto, as she felt his hot breath on her neck. As she felt it, hours later, as the both of them were lying in bed, as I have said, beware of the Chicago container. Chicago is the most unstable, and he's most likely driven the host crazy with his unstable ramblings. Is there any way for me to identify him, said Ruto. He has powers over sand, so his container must be similar. Last time I saw him, he was rampaging to the west, so he has no doubt been seen by the hidden sand. As Nurto looked at her with a smile, as he knew that he had gained a special place in her heart, as she was warning him because she was looking out for him, and not just because he was worthy of her attention. Time skip. Nurto was watching Lee get his ass kicked with confusion. They had just entered the academy building, and they were supposed to go through a crowd. With his large stature, he was able to simply walk through them, and they move aside. Seeing Lee get pushed around by a couple of tuning was a rather odd sight as he made Lee look like a wimp. Especially since they were in front of room 201. Naruto was confused because they were supposed to go to room 301. If you can't even get past us, then you might as well go home, one of the tuning said. Real nice speech, no reverse again, Jutsu, and let us through. I'm sure that sucker noticed it a mile away, said Sasuke. Can Jutsu? As Naruto almost smacked himself, as he was immune to it, so he didn't even notice. He had taken up the keeping the chakra dense in his body to see how long he could keep it for if he could make that second nature without even knowing and it was activated. I got confused by reality itself again Jutsu. Oh the irony he said to himself. So you noticed the illusion did you? The tune in the bandage shed across his nose. Let's see you deal with this as he swings his leg towards Sasuke. Sasuke reacted to that kick of his own but Lee caught the both of them with one ease. So you finally done pretend to be a wimp Lee said Naruto. Naruto said Lee. I'm glad to see that you're participating in this most youthful exam. You know this guy, Sasuke said, as he looked towards Naruto, as he was surprised that this guy blocked his kick so easily. We sparred together and both of us at the time, Naruto answered. While that was going on, Lee stepped in front of Sakura, and he started to talk to her. You're a Sakura, yes. Sakura nodded. My name is Rock Lee. Please be my girlfriend. I vote to protect you with my life. Definitely not, she said. But why, said Lee? Because you're a weirdo, she said. As Lee went slump in a depressive mode, as Naruto found the whole thing hilarious, but he was wondering, what the hell did Lee saw in soccer? The short, pissing contest between Sasuke and Neji was also funny. The both of them thought that they were badass. As Sasuke was struggling with a struggling insecurity around his tall, blonde teammate, and he wanted to show himself as big as possible. Everything that they've done so far, Naruto seemed to be better at it. He bought some affinity paper, and he found that he had a lightning and fire affinity. As he spent the last two months learning some ninjutsu and polishing his taijutsu as he wanted to make sure that he closed the gap between the both of them. After all, if he couldn't even measure up to his teammate, how was he ever going to beat Itachi one day? As Sakura urged him to hand in the registration before the time ran out, as she didn't want to fight the breakup between them and also she wanted to get away from Bush Iron Lee. They didn't make it too far as Lee caught up with them. He wanted to test himself against Sasuke. There is no point in fighting him Lee, he wouldn't be any chance for you. Sasuke started grinding his teeth in anger. But Naruto, I wish to fight him anyway. Just see how far my hard work has brought me against a genius, said Lee. Enough! I'll fight this freak, Sasuke said. Sakura looked nervous. She had faith in Sasuke's strength, but Naruto was stronger than Sasuke, she could tell that. And Naruto said that Lee was his sparring partner. Naruto started to laugh the entire time as Sasuke was unable to keep up with Lee's speed, and Lee didn't even take his weight off. As Guy Sensei and Kurt to show up though to stop the fight. But watching Sakura and Sasuke exposure to the Sunset Genjutsu. Yes, that was pretty hilarious. Time skip. You guys really need to calm down. You're attracting too much attention. Says so Silver Gear Jenin. All three Jenin team had gathered. And they were creating quite a ruckus. When a boy came over there wearing glasses. And who the hell are you said Ino. I am Kabuto Yakushi. And I just came to warn you that you're making too much noise. You will draw yourself as targets. But still, you wouldn't know how things work in shooting exams, seeing that you're just first Jennings. So this isn't your first time taking the exam, asked Sakura. No, actually, this is my seventh time, he said, a bit embarrassed. So does that mean you're an expert on shooting exams, Sakura said, as she was hoping to gain some information from him. You could say that. Some expert, if he's failed several times, said Shikamaru. Well, I haven't been completely wasting time, since I collected quite a bit of information on my Ninfo cards. Nin info cards? What kind of information do you have, asked Sakura? All sorts of things. As Kabuto activated the first card to demonstrate, this year we have some pretty stiff competition. Konoha as the most team in the exams, followed by the San, Taki, Kusa, and the Rain. 
And finally, just one team from the sound. It's not surprising that they're saying one team, considering that they are just new in the village. Do you have any information on individuals? Sasuke asks. Suddenly, interesting. Why yes, I do. If you tell me who you are interesting, then I can show you what I have in them. Rock Lee of Konoha. Sub Konogara of the Sand. And Naruto Uzumaki of Konoha, said Sasuke. Trying to see if this guy is going to know anything about me that you don't already know, princess, said Naruto. Stop calling me princess, you asshole, Sasuke said. I'll stop calling you princess when you stop pouting like one, said Naruto. Don't insult Sasuke Khan like that, did last, said Ino. As Sakura suddenly got fear for her rival. You're lucky that we're in the middle of a exam, said Naruto. But if you say that once again, I'm going to plant your head in a wall. Ino was about to say something else, but Shikamaru stopped her. Shikamaru saw that Naruto was dead serious, and seeing that he was not wearing anything to conceal the muscles on his body, he was sure that Naruto was capable of it. Alright, I got the cards you asked for, Kabuto said, calling attention to yourself again. Rock Lee graduated the year before you. His teammates are Tenten, Hayuga Neji, and team leader guy. He has completed 45 D ranks and 23 C ranks. His performance in the academy was pretty terrible, tied for a dead last actually, but he has become quite impressive in the last year. His skill in Taijutsu is very high, but he doesn't know anything about Ninjutsu or Genjutsu. Next up, comes Sub Kunogara. He's not from Konoha, so I don't know much about his skills, but I know that his teammates are his older siblings, Temari and Konkuru, and their team leader is Baki. And the scary thing about him is, he has returned from missions with not even a single scratch on him, even B rank missions. Everyone was quite surprised about that. Have you been messing with Sad Ninja, Sasuke in to ask? We ran into him the other day, Sakura said, and he seemed pretty strong. Alright, lastly, Naruto Uzumaki was the dead last of the academy for 4 years. Graduated the academy in the fifth year of his try. Seemed to be a lost cause of a shinobi. But since graduated, he has shown changes. He has shown high skills in Taijutsu. Seen training with Rock Lee. Teammates are Sasuke Uchiha and Haruna Sakura. Team leader is Kakashi Hatagi, the copy ninja. He has completed 30 D ranks, 4 C rank, and 1 A rank. This shocked everyone except for Team 7. How the hell did you guys get an A rank mission at Skiba? We didn't. The client lied about the ranking. It was supposed to be a C rank, said Naruto. There's also been um rumors about Uzumaki san. Kabuta said rather embarrassingly. Rumors? said Ino. She always liked to hear rumors. Sasuke was no regret in asking about his blonde teammate, as Sakura looked as she wanted to be anywhere else but here. Apparently, Uzumaki san has a reputation of sleeping with female clients on the missions, D ranks. Yes, it seems like his D rank missions are just female clients. That just want to sleep with him. The assembled Jennings had their jaw hanging in disbelief as they looked at Sasuke and Sakura seeing the embarrassment on their face that confirmed it. Who the hell man? You mean why we've been chasing cats, picking up rubbish and doing all sorts of crap. Naruto has been having sex all over the place and getting paid for it. Hmm. Sounds about right said Naruto as he looked at Kiba as Kiba seemed incredibly jealous. What the hell is so special about you that many women want to sleep with you anyway? To name a few things, I'm an adult, blonde, badass, whose body doesn't look like a wet noodle. I don't smell like dog all the time, and my thing is the size of your forearm. Hinata brain was cooking at this point, as Ino and Sakura couldn't contain your blushes as well. Oh yeah? I'm not buying that for a second, said Kiba, so don't go around making decoration like that unless you're gonna whip it out and prove it. As he was trying to come out on top, despite everything, as Naruto reached down and started to pull his pants off, as everyone's face became just like Hinata's before Sakura started to scream at him. Damn it, Naruto, keep it in your pants. Don't you have any shame, she asks. Hmm, no, not really. Quiet down, you punks. A Scarface man said. At this point, the sound Jennings were so caught up watching the Konoha Shinobis, especially the blonde one. They had missed their chance to take a swing at Kabuto. Time skip. Our youthful students must be taking your exam right now. The first part said guy. Huh? You say something, guys, say Kakashi. Curse you on your youthful ways, Kakashi. At least your student, Naruto, is more youthful than you. The four of them were launching around as Asuma and Krenai was there as well, waiting for the Jennings to finish her first part with this. How about we make a little friendly wager, said Asuma. What kind of wager, said Krenai curiously. Well, which one of us team to do the best in the exam, said Asuma. A most useful idea, I wager. 500 right on my students, said Guy. I join you on that. 500 right on my team. Well, Nurik and Sasuke at least, said Kakashi. Sakura has been improving lately but she was so far behind if the other two weren't so strong. He would have never let them participate in the exams. As expected from my eternal rival, said Guy. I'll put 500 right on my team, but I think only Shikamaru is going to make it to the final, said Asuma. There was silence. Aren't you going to bet on your team, Kurnai? 
I would love to say that my team are going to do the best, but I can't convince myself that they have any chance against Naruto Shisen. Wasn't he the dead last for several years now? Why wouldn't your team be able to beat him? asked Asuma. Well, Naruto is the type of guy that always has some surprises in store. Indeed, he has been a most useful sparring partner for Lee, said Guy. If it was just that, I would still bet on my team. But the problem is, he beat me in a spar, Kurnai said. Asuma was shocked. But what? How the hell did a fresh genin beat you? As Guy and Kakashi did as well. He came to me because he needed a Genjutsu special to help him with a Fuinjutsu project he has been working on. And how to dispel Genjutsu. While I was teaching him this, he somehow managed to condense his chakra to the point where he's completely immune to Genjutsu. Since illusions are useless, I had to fight him with Taijutsu and Ninjutsu, and he was just too fast and strong. And I couldn't keep up, she said. The worst part is I think he could have used Fuinjutsu to end it even faster. Immune to Genjutsu? How the hell did he manage that at Asuma? Well, we talk about it. A normal person's chakra flow like water, but his is more like thick mud. When he condenses his chakra, more like concrete. So the chakra I use in my genjutsu cannot flow through him. But to that kind of chakra, how can he even use ninjutsu? Asks Asuma. He can't really. The only ones he can use are specialized, like shy clones and the ones that he created himself, said Kakashi. The way you say that now made me think that he might know some ninjutsu besides shy clones, said Kurnai. As she wondered if Naruto's actually holding back during their spar. Kakashi simply I smile as he did not answer her. Well, I'll still bet 500 in my team anyway. I'm pretty sure at least one of them will make it to the final test, she said. Meanwhile, as the 40 minutes for the exam had just passed, Hinata was looking at Ruto as he was calm the entire time. He didn't even pull out a single thing on his paper. He wasn't doing anything as Ibiki was also curious. He seemed cool and calm as everyone else was a bit, well, sweating under the pressure. As Naruto then got to his feet, as his chakra was thick, he could see it again Jutsu, well the transformation and the layer of chakra over all the chunins in the room that weren't supposed to be there who had the right answer. Naruto walked up to the man. It was quite sudden as Naruto fisted him right in his stomach and knocked him out. As Naruto picked up his paper and wrote his name and write his there. It's a good thing I don't need to be subtle then, said Naruto, as long as I only do it once. True enough, Ibiki said. But if anyone else tried to do that, you fail. No repeating. Why the hell does he get away with it and we can't? One of them asked. Because he had the stones of coming up with it himself. Now, no more questions. As the time finally passed. Alright, pencils down. Now, there's a special rule for 10 questions. What rule? One of them said. You can choose to take it if you want or not. What happens if we don't take it? Asked Amari. Then you and your team immediately fail the test, said Ibiki with a smirk. What kind of stupid rule is that? Of course you're gonna take it then. The reason is, if you get it wrong, you will never be able to participate ever again, and you will stay Jennings for the rest of your life. That's bullcrap, said Kiba. There are people here that have taken the exam before and returned. Well then, you're just unlucky because this time, I made the rules. Ibiki said chuckling. Now choose, those of you who don't want the questions, raise your hand. After several tense minutes, someone broke and raised his hand, apologizing to his teammates. A flood of people started to raise their hands and give up. As Nurt knew that Ibiki couldn't prevent him from taking the exam ever again, even if he did have that authority, Nurt didn't care what Oranki was. Kurnai already got him the access to full Jutsu knowledge that the Jonins could receive. It would be actually good for him to stay at Jenin. That way, he wouldn't be bogged down by other responsibilities and could just keep on gaining power. Ibiki saw Naruto feet on the table and he was just leaning back. He was too calm and he was giving the authors courage. What about you Uzumaki? You won't be able to punch someone kid answer to the last question. Well then, I'll kick them instead. Ibiki couldn't help but chuckle at the answer. It's not going to be that easy, he said. Are you really going to risk staying at Jenin for the rest of your life? On the off chance, you can't get around rules like that. Well, I really don't give a damn what rank I am, so you trying to scare me is quite pointless. Besides, how can you keep someone at Jenin forever, especially those who aren't from Konoha? Ibiki cursed in his mind, him trying to get Naruto to quit and backfire on him, as everyone else seemed rather calm now. I guess. There's no more wasting. Alright, everyone in this room, pass. As all the questions broke out, as Ibiki explained to them the real reason behind the test. As he removed the thing from his head showing the scars on it, as he gave them a lecture, when something burst through the window, as a banner was pinned up to the wall. Proctor of the Chunin exams, second phase, the sexy and single, Midoroshi Onko was written on it, with the woman there standing right in front of it. Most of the genuine were gawking at her, and the way she was dressed, as Naruto whistled, as Sakura grown. I gave you a 9 out of 10 for the entrance. You get an extra point for crashing through the window. 
but your timing was off and your posing could use that to work, said Ruto. Onko was going to make a head count and curse in here for being so much, but he caught your attention. And who exactly are you, brat? She said. Naruto vanished from his seat in a blur and appeared in front of her. Who are you calling a brat? Shorty Naruto said as he towered over her. And the name is Naruto Uzumaki. She glared up at him, but she knew the name. As this guy Kurin has been telling her about, as Uncle was surprised that Kurin had gained a romantic interest in anyone, yet alone a Jenin. As she told her to be weary, and she saw now the speed that this one just take. The two of them kept on glaring at each other until Naruto grinned. I like your style, Uncle, he said. Your style is so bad either, Naruto, she said, with a grin of her own. As she really didn't like when people were being so polite when talking to each other. Sama or San or those things. But it was refreshing hearing him just talk to her that way. The both of them wore open coats that left their chests bare. Granted, Uncle wore a mesh shirt underneath. But Naruto was a man so he could pull it off. And he had a good physique. A thought went through Uncle's head. What if Kurina has a heart for me and transferred to this guy? Because she's in denial of being a lesbian. This guy is basically like a male version of me. God damn it, Naruto, we're in the middle of the exam. Don't you think it's a bad time to eat in someone's pants? Sakura shouted. Both of them realized that he has been ignoring everyone else in the room. The other Jenny's who didn't have enough interaction with Naruto started to feel pity for Sakura and Sasuke. Naruto turned towards Sakura. It is always a good time getting a hot girl's fantasy, he said. As he grinned, as his teeth sparkled. As Lee was reminded of Guy as he started to jot that note in his notebook, tainting, and Ninja eyes went wide. Several other people in the room were crying and looking at Naruto like they just heard a word, an impassionate word from a poet. Oh? But what if I'm not wearing any, said Uncle, as nosebleeds could be seen from some of the boys. Well then, you just might be my third or fourth. Favorite woman in the world, he said. Third or fourth? You must know some interesting woman, Blondie. She wasn't offended, considering that they just made five minutes ago. That was damn high on the list. Oh, they're definitely interesting, all right, said Naruto. As he thought of Zana, as Ayam was in number two position, and he was thinking of Tsunami. But he hoped he never saw her again, as these feelings, he didn't want to, well, go through them. Uncle, Ibiki said, what are you going to tell him about the second part of the exam? Oh yeah, right. All right, all of you, meet me at train Girl 44. Tomorrow, ask your senses for direction if you don't know where it is. As she jumped through the broken window, time skip. As the gather Jennings were looking towards the giant forest as he looked at the gates, they could hear noises in there, rather noises that sound rather scary. Welcome train Girl 44, otherwise known as the forest of death. This is a creepy place, said Tucker. You will be able to experience why this place is called the Forest of Death, said Uncle. Naruto scoffed. The moment he did a kunai was sent sailing towards him. It would have cut his cheek, but he caught it. As Uncle appeared behind him, another kunai in her hand. As she sliced his cheek with it. Tough guy like you. Always spill the most blood in there, she said. But Naruto didn't poof in the smoke. Uncle felt large hands grabbing her waist and something pressing up against her. Proctor san I have a medical condition I need to tell you about. He whispered in her ear. And what is this condition of yours? Janine san she said. Whenever a beautiful, sexy, vibrant woman threw kunais at me or any weapon at all, I became deadly aroused. Well, that's a terrible something for you, she said. Because second part, some people are going to be throwing at you weapons from all over. And all of them are not going to be women, she said. Oh, I don't mind that. Because most of them in there are going to be too young for my taste. But... There's a rather sexy hot proctor that is making my blood boiling and I'm having trouble restraining myself. As Naruto hands started to go up, Uncle got herself free and slashed him. It was just a tiny cut. We'll see about that if you go through tuning exams, she said. She felt embarrassed a minute ago as she would never tell anyone the way he was rubbing against her and what she felt. And not to mention the way he was talking, she knew what he wanted to do with her. There were several reactions amongst the rookies. Kiba was so jealous of Naruto ease away with the ladies. Shikamaru thought it was troublesome as he realized every blondes were troublesome. Ino was soaking the whole thing up like it was a soap opera. Sakura and Sasuke was annoyed, irritated and resigned. Chozu was eating his chips faster than normal in an effort to cope with his embarrassment as Shino was embarrassed as he was trying to understand why, the logic of it all. As Hinata was embarrassed as well but she was also envy of the both of them and of their confidence. As Uncle started to pass with the forms, they need to sign that before going in there. As Hinata took the initiative, as she saw that Naruto was alone, as she had a jar of cream. Um, Naruto-san, I, I have some cream that, that can help you with your wound, she said, staggering. As Naruto looked towards her, 
as she seemed rather embarrassed. She just looked like an adorable little girl. If he was in her soccer, he would have brushed them off. But doing that to her, he felt like he was kicking a puppy. Besides, out of all the girls in the academy, she was the only one not trying to get the attention of one boy or another. The slight wound that uncle gave him would close soon, but he decided to humor her. Alright, but you gotta call me big brother from now on, said Naruto. She blushed in embarrassment once again, but she acted like that idea, so this was a plus for her. She nodded her head and held out the cream. Oh no, he said, you're the medic here. So go and apply the cream to the wound, he said, as he held his coat open for her. She did her best as her hand was trembling, as she take the cream and wiped it across the wound, as her hand was trembling immensely. But she did it. Um, there you go, big, big brother, she said. As she was happy when things went out, she went through with no pass note and Naruto told her to call him brother. As she had grown to like him, he was the only older figure in her life that didn't treat her like a worthless embarrassment. Yes, and calling him brother, big brother, was the best outcome because she saw him as such. Since, he came to ask Kurenai for help and the way he acted and talked, well, she could do without some of the embarrassing quotes that he made, but he was a nice person and he didn't see her as her father or Neji or the others that saw her as useless. Uncle chuckled to herself as Hayashi, that stuck up prick, is going to have a heart attack when he hear this. Hearing his daughter calling her to big brother, as that made her want to laugh out loud. She would have fun telling Kurenai about this later. Time skip. Naruto wasn't so sure what came over him, telling him not to call him Big Brother. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Yes, a funny idea. As she also gave out little sister vibes as well. He could plan his training and other things with rather ease, but with alter life decisions. Scene with Sabuza's blade. What can a person tell someone to get on their knees and strip? To get by the blade. He didn't even know Haku gender when he said that. He just wanted to use that insult on someone. As he was going to use it again because he never saw Haku expression because of the mask. But there will be time to think about that later right now. They need to find a team of unlucky bastards that was going to donate their team. Scroll to team 7. Earth scroll. They already heard some screaming. Mean that someone got hurt or killed already. Their own heaven scroll was safely sealed inside Nurta's coat. As Nurta saw blush in the trees. Huh. Wish Ida decided to come after them. Stay here guys, I need to take a piss, then Ruto, as he went to the bushes. The both of them were confused by this, because he has never shown any shame before about relieving himself. Soccer protests about him doing that in front of a lady only made him ask if she saw a lady and if they were hot. Not that they weren't once grateful that he was showing some decency, but it was suspicious. Before they could question it, alright, let's go, Sasuke, soccer. As Sasuke shoot forward and kicked Nurto right in the chest. As he slammed against a tree. What's the big idea, Sasuke? said Naruto. What are you doing, Sasuke? Kan Sakura said that she didn't want him to fight in this creepy forest. Naruto really called us by name, and he would have been more than able to block that kick. Hey, you're right, said Sakura. Yeah, he usually called them Princess and Pinky, or whatever struck him as fun at that time. And he would also be able to block that attack. The imposter cancelled the transformation as he was genuine from the hidden rain, when a mouth breather. Unlucky. No, I have to use force, he said. As he charged at Sasuke, but Sasuke jumped in the air and went through hand sign. Fire style. Phoenix flame technique. The Jenny dodged all of the fireballs. But he was too focused on Sasuke as he was grabbed around the neck. B didn't I tie you up? I untie myself, said Naruto. So you knew that he was going to do this, Sasuke said that scowl. As Sasuke was angry, Naruto was one step ahead of him once again. As Sakura felt bad, she has been useless once again. In fact, she hasn't done anything really useful since they were assigned to the team. And Naruto harsh words all those months ago. Yes, it was true. Sure did, said Naruto. I'm not sure which India thought that yellow was a good color to use when hiding in the forest. Now let's see if this weirdo has a scroll on him. Lucky, I don't. What if I decide to pick the location of your teammates out of you, said Naruto. Lucky, we decide to split up and make towards the tower. And we will be there in a few days, so I don't know where they are. What if I decide to kill you because the way you talk annoy me, said Naruto. Unlucky, the boy said. You're damn right unlucky. But lucky for you, I'm not in the habit of killing helpless idiots unless they're rapists or murderers. You're not one of them, are you, Senuto? Lucky, no. As he was rather relieved by that, you would hear it in the boy's voice. So yeah, guys, I'm going to end this episode right here. If you want to part of this or do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember to share to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also, stay in tune for your support to your way. And remember, if you're new, and this is the first time you hear my voice, and you enjoy the videos on both, anime making and anime making too, 
go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the enemy family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, I'm out for now. See you guys soon. Peace.